السلام عليكم ماي نيم دكتور محمد ال شريف كونسلتنت انترنال ميديسن فروم بوسز اند فاسكولار ميديسن فروم كينج فهد ميديكال سيتي اي وود لايك تو سبيك اباوت فيري امبورتنت توبيك ويتش از ستاتين ريليتد مايوباثي اي هوب يو وود هاف انترستينج برزنتيشن اي ويل تيك يو ثرو ذا اوتلاينز اوف ستاتين ريليتد مايوباثي Uh, always, uh, we have to start with case presentation to illustrate the importance of this topic. Uh, then I will go about introduction and definition of statin-related myopathy, uh, epidemiology, pathophysiology, clinical features, uh, risk factors, monitoring, and management strategies. First, the case scenario, this is a real-life uh, patient I have seen in my clinic. Uh, he's, uh, she's 57-year-old female. Uh, presented to emergency with fatigue and muscle pain for three weeks. And she is a known case of dyslipidemia on simvastatin 10 milligram for two years. And uh, upon her presentation to our uh, emergency, her uh, CK was 2,000, 28,000, uh, and was admitted as a case of statin induced myopathy to rule out rhabdomyolysis. Uh, so this is just briefing uh, about statin. Uh, statins are increasingly used to lower the serum cholesterol uh, concentration for both primary and secondary prevention of coronary artery disease. And statins are both effective and generally safe, although uncommon muscle toxicity remains a concern and range from myalgias to myositis to overt rhabdomyolysis, which may be associated with acute renal failure. Uh, the spectrum of statin-related myopathy uh, ranges from uh, common but clinically benign myalgia to rare but life-threatening rhabdomyolysis. Uh, luckily, uh, I mean, uh, life-threatening rhabdomyolysis is rare or exceedingly rare uh, disease. Statin-related myopathy may be more prevalent in daily practice than in controlled clinical trials. And statins uh, can, uh, myopathy can adversely affect both quality of life and adherence to this potentially life-threatening or life-saving uh, treatment. I will shed uh, some light about the historical perspective of discovery of statins. It is a really interesting discovery. Actually, statins were discovered by serendipity or incidentally by the Japanese scientist or microbiologist Akira Endo while he was looking for antimicrobial uh, agent from the fermentation broth he discovered this important drug and it was in the mid of 1970 and uh, the first statin which lovastatin which was in the 1980s then uh, through we have more potent statins such as uh, atorvastatin and uh, rosovastatin. But in 1987, very important, or August 2001, sirvastatin was taken off the US market after reports of 31 deaths from rhabdomyolysis. And this slide is important, uh, statins are not the same. They differ, they differ in the potency uh, and in terms of LDA reduction with various uh, statins. The most potent one is rosovastatin and 65% reduction of LDL with the maximum dose which is 40, which is equivalent to 80 milligram of Libitor and it can decrease 60 up to 65. Other statins like uh, lovastatins, bravastatin are least potent, but the least potent is flovastatin, which can reduce up to 30 percent with the uh, from LDL with the maximum dose of flovastatin 80 milligram.
there is no consensus uh, for definition of statin related myopathy but however there are proposed definitions by the international expert bodies like American College of Cardiology, American Heart Association and National Lipid Association. So there is three myopathy, myalgias, myositis and rhabdo. Then we'll take start by uh, myopathy which is we'll take the first one American College of Cardiology, American Heart Association, myopathy general term referring to any disease of the muscles. It can involve so it will be uh, encompassing myalgias, myositis, and rhabdo. But myalgias, which is benign, muscle ache or weakness without creatinine kinase elevation. Then we have myositis. There will be muscle symptoms with creatinine kinase elevation. And the most extreme and the most severe rhabdo myolysis, muscle symptoms with significant CK or creatinine kinase elevation, typically more than 10 times our limit of normal, or in definition of National Lipid Association, more than 10,000 or more than 50 uh, times our limit of normal by the FDA. So there is, uh, there is no consensus, but I will take myself personally more than 10,000 uh, unit, okay? Then I will go to the next uh, slide, which is from up to date. This is actually, this is from another uh, expert group. They are trying to simplify uh, the definition. And again, myopathy, they are breaking down myopathy to symptomatic myopathy or asymptomatic. So myopathy, as I have uh, mentioned earlier, general term, all studied muscle problems. So the symptomatic myopathy, signs and symptoms, referable to skeletal muscle, including myalgias, muscle pain, weakness, subjective or objective, and cramps, uh, and asymptomatic. Sometimes patients, they are taking statin. Incidentally, you are looking for something else. You'll see high CK, but without any objective weakness or subjective complaint. So this is important. And then we have the clinically important rhabdo, which is any evidence of muscle cell destruction or enzyme leakage felt to be causally related to change in renal function. And we have mentioned, okay, CK, they can uh, classify it to mild, uh, moderate, or marked CK increase. Okay, uh, differential diagnosis of myopathy or creatinine kinase elevation, uh, not only due to lipid lowering therapy, you have to keep in mind there is wide differential diagnosis for uh, regarding any, uh, for muscle symptoms, so any physical exertion, particularly in unaccustomed individuals, uh, they might have, uh, due, uh, I mean, uh, muscle soreness due to, uh, I mean, uh, deposition of lactate uh, in the muscles. Uh, viral illness like influenza, vitamin D deficiency, hypo or hyperthyroidism, the cushion syndrome or adrenal insufficiency. So wide array of endocrinopathy, uh, but we have to uh, important trauma and injections like voluntary injection, important seizure or uh, rigors or severe rigors uh, in addition to uh, certain medications which are commonly used like glucocorticoids, uh, antiretroviral drugs and illicit drugs like particularly cocaine and amphetamine. So this is again to epidemiology uh, in uh, randomized uh, control trials, statin myopathy incidence is about 1.5% to 5%. However, it is difficult to directly compare the incidence of statin myopathy in clinical trials with real world clinical practice given the inconsistent definitions. Uh, an analysis of 30 randomized control trials with uh, 83,000 uh, revealed 49 versus 44 cases of myositis and seven versus five cases of rhabdomyolysis among patients who received statin versus placebo respectively. And however, experience uh, in clinical practice suggests that muscle side effects are relatively uh, common and uh, phase four or post-marketing uh, surveillance through the FDA 
uh, has do documented low reporting rates of statin-related myopathy, myositis, and rhabdo, 2002-2004, lowest for fluvastatin, because I, uh, as I have mentioned earlier, it is the least potent, okay, uh, and highest for rosuvastatin, which is the most potent. The PRIMO study, which is one of the landmark trials, the proportion of patients with muscle-related symptoms differed when patients took fluvastatin, which is the least potent, 5.1%, to 14.9% in atorvastatin and simvastatin, 18.2%, which are the more potent statins. And the rates of FRABDU are still reassuringly low, about 0.1 to 0.2 cases per 1,000 uh, person uh, years. And the most potent statins currently available by an FDA post-marketing analysis that reported a 0.2% rate of myopathy and a 0.01 rate of FRABDO, about one in uh, 100,000, which is really reassuring. Okay, uh, the spectrum of statin-related uh, muscle disorders, this is a pyramid. The top of the pyramid is RABDO, which is the rarest account incidence 1 in 10,000 and in some report 1 in 100,000 and the uh, most common which is myalgia 5% and in between we have myopathy and myositis. The mechanism uh, of statin related myopathy is incompletely understood. There are many uh, theories behind this but the most accepted is coenzyme Q10 depletion which might contribute to statin myopathy because in mitochondria coenzyme Q10 plays an important role in muscle cell energy production. And it has been speculated that a reduction in CoQ enzyme 10 may contribute to statin induced muscle injury. And doing muscle biopsy showed myopathic changes in only some patients who receive statins and are inconsistently related to symptoms or CK elevation. And EMG findings were also inconsistently associated with biopsy findings. So this is the uh, cholesterol uh, pyothensitic pathway. It is a complex, but we will try to simplify it. Uh, statins are inhibitor of the HMG coenzyme A, which is, uh, in, which is very important enzyme in cholesterol biothensis. It is, this is step limiting uh, enzyme for cholesterol synthesis. I will, as you can see, it can go through cascade of product to cholesterol. At the meantime, also it inhibit production of ubiquinone, which is coenzyme Q10, which is important for energy production. Now we are uh, moving to the clinical features and risk factors. So the onset of muscle symptoms is usually within weeks to months after the initiation of statin therapy, but may occur at any time during treatment. Like the patient I have presented, it occurred after two years of treatment. Myalgias and weakness resolve and serum C kinase concentrations return to normal over days to weeks after discontinuation of the drug. So this is a reversible condition. The onset and course of statin-related myopathy, a review of 44 cases of statin-assisted myopathy found approximately two-thirds of patients had onset of symptoms within six months of starting therapy. In the uh, same study, 43 patients who discontinued statin therapy, 58% had resolution of symptoms within one month and 93% had resolution within six months. Our patient, which I illustrated earlier, resolved after one month of discontinuation of statin. Uh, Statin-induced myalgia typically presents as proximal symmetric muscle weakness and soreness. There may be muscle tenderness and there may be a functional impairment such as difficulty uh, raising the arms above the head like trying to comb the hair or uh, rising from a seated position like during brain, this is very common, and climbing stairs. And less often, the discomfort is asymmetric. And these are the risk factors for statin-related myopathy. And uh, 
they are divided to patient related or statin related the patient related advanced age female sex small uh, body frame and frailty multisystemic disease particularly involvement of liver like liver failure or chronic liver disease chronic kidney disease or failure or both hypothyroidism important you know hypothyroidism it causes you know uh, elevation of ck alcoholism and grape fruit juice consumption and major surgery or preoperative uh, period and excessive physical activity or strenuous activity and history of myopathy while receiving another lipid lowering therapy and history of ck elevation and unexplained crumbs family history and family history of myopathy while receiving lipid lowering therapy so uh, risk factor for statin related myopathy now treatment related the high dose statin therapy the higher the dose the more okay uh, side effect and uh, i recommend uh, or the recommendations they start the smallest dose then uh, stepwise intensification till you achieve the ldl target uh, and interaction with concomitant drugs like fibrates very common classical combination statin and fibrate which is very common cause of rhabdo cyclosporine antifungals macrolide antibiotic like azithromax or clarithromycin hiv protease inhibitor amiodarone and verabamil so statin characteristics because uh, simva lova and atorva are primarily metabolized through the cytochrome p450 3a4 sib 3a4 isozyme so inhibitors of this isozyme could increase statin level uh, and the common drugs uh, are protease inhibitors cyclosporine amiodarone and fibrates and adverse event reporting uh, system rate of rhabdomyolysis for the phenofibrate plus statin other than servastatin combination was about 15 times lower than for gym fibrozil plus statin so there is i mean there is recent evidence that you can if you must combine statin with other fibrate you can safely with phenofibrate but not with gym uh, fibrozil thus phenofibrate can be cautiously co-administered with statins and the monitoring monitoring this is a really controversial uh, area and routine monitoring of serum ck uh, levels is not recommended but it is useful to obtain a baseline serum ck before initiation of statin therapy for reference in case symptoms develop and national lipid association which i'm personally member of this important uh, association recommended don't or don't advise measuring ck level at baseline in all patients but rather only in those at high risk for myopathy such as elderly patient patient receiving concomitant medication or patient with renal or hepatic dysfunction and the american uh, college of cardiology and american heart association advise measuring ck level at baseline for all patient before initiation of statin therapy because asymptomatic ck elevation are common and could affect later clinical decision myself i uh, measure uh, ck at baseline now uh, to the more complex and challenging uh, area which is the management of such patient so uh, if a patient develops myopathy symptoms while receiving therapy the uh, expert uh, groups recommend determining serum ck level and comparing them with baseline ck level if available in addition to searching for other causes regardless of ck elevation and also they advise measuring serum thyroid stimulating hormone level because hypothyroidism can present with myopathy or ck elevation as well as 